in this video, I'm going to be creating the largest wave tsunami in the world. But Steve, how is this possible? How are you going to do this, you might ask? Well, <laughs> glad you asked. We're going to be using some visual effects, trickery, and magic. Simulating and generating realistic giant waves is pretty challenging in the 3D industry, but we're taking the challenge even a little bit further, doing it all completely free using the open source software Blender. Speaking about waves, this video's sponsor, MSI, is making waves in the laptop industry. MSI's new creator, Z17, is the ultimate tool for artistic creators looking for a no-compromise, do-it-all laptop. The build construction is next level. It's slim and lightweight, but feels incredibly durable, and would you believe this runs up to 5 gigahertz, and they managed to fit a top-of-the-line NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti mobile GPU in this? So immediately you'll notice how super fast and smooth everything runs and looks thanks to the incredibly fast 165 hertz refresh rate on this 17-inch display. And that's almost my favorite feature, except for the fact that you can also do this. It also manages to fit a full keyboard. This is great for pro work, like switching between 3D views and Blender. This one comes packed with 64 gigabytes of RAM, two gigabytes of NVMe, super fast storage, and loads of other pro features. Check them all out with a link in the video description. So getting right down to business, I fired up the latest version of Blender. And as with every new project, I'd like to try and learn something new along the way. Now, the latest and greatest features added to Blender is geometry nodes. Now geometry nodes for us normal people is kind of terrifying. Geo nodes is basically capable of doing everything you can do with 3D modeling and animating, except all with nodes, which is awesome and terrifying at the same time. So for the last few weeks, I've been like a little newborn baby at kindergarten, learning how to use Blender all over for the first time and doing my share of following some awesome tutorials already out there on YouTube. But that gave me the idea for the basic geometry of this wave to create it all in geo nodes and animate it through that node editor. I followed a tutorial by a Blender artist that is much more of a wizard with geometry nodes than myself. Now, even after going through this awesome tutorial multiple times, I still don't 100% understand what's going on here because remember, Remember, little baby Stevie back in kindergarten learning Blender all over again. But the basics that I have going on here is I'm using different math nodes to deform the position of the plane. Mainly using the cosine, I think I'm pronouncing that right, math node to add the general wave deformations, so adding this just to the Z axis of our plane. And then using the sine math node to kind of add the right shape to our waves, as well as then kind of skew them so they're angled along the X axis a little bit. And then there's just a bunch of multiply nodes to basically control these different values. So it's actually pretty simple, minus the spider a web of nodes. Then once you have the basic shape, it was a matter of just using some noise textures to add extra details and deformations to the wave, make it look more imperfect. But once I added those to both the X and Y deformations and animated the value, we had some moving waves in our viewport. But at this point now, I can start playing around with the camera and the scale of the wave to start getting a really giant looking tsunami-like wave. Now to apply some 3D materials to the wave, I started by adding some different environment maps to get different lighting, as a 3D environment map can change the look if you've seen tremendously. Then I just started with a basic principle shader turning the transmission to one and the roughness way down for a simple water shader on this wave. Then I went about adding different wave and noise textures to add different layers of white foam on top of the water to really give it the sense of scale and moving water. Adding all of these textures together and adding them on top of that principal shader. I separated the Z channel to isolate just the top of the wave and use that as a mask to apply some of the white foam to just the top of the wave for sort of that crest and white cap on the very top of the wave that you'll start to see. To push the realism level a little bit higher I added some really small textures as displacements to the shader to act as tiny little ripples on this giant wave and really help give it a sense of scale. Then at last, I added a volume shader to that material to give it some depth. And this is really the coolest part of the shader because it allows some light to pass through the volume, but also shows just how large and dense this wave really is. But also is gonna hit your render times pretty hard Unless maybe you have a fast GPU in your computer or laptop, like the RTX 3080 Ti mobile GPU. <laughs> Shout out to this video sponsor. Now it's time for the real fun stuff, stimulating some splashes for the top of the wave. So for this, I fired up a new project in Blender. I added some smoke objects and a smoke domain. I took that fluid and I simulated it using some advanced Manta Flow fluid simulation settings inside of Blender. Added some collision objects and animated them flying out of the water to add some splash effects to the scene. And I baked the simulation out and I was left with something like uh, yeah. like 
Not the most impressive looking splash. So then I went into the fluid particle settings and enabled spray, boosted the divisions and resolution up a bit and baked again. This added all kinds of spray particles to that simulation and by rendering these as tiny little icospheres, I was able to create multiple image sequences of these fluid particles being shot all over the place to simulate that crest on top of the wave where the water starts splashing and getting really large. This should work really well to add a sense of scale and realism to our tsunami wave. With those image sequences now, I was able to go back to my wave file and start adding the splashes to the wave. Of course, I just wanted them at the peak crest of the wave, so I created a separate object and using a vertex weight proximity modifier, told Blender to only put the particles at the top of the wave. Of course, this also could have been all done with geometry nodes, probably pretty easily actually, but don't forget I'm still in kindergarten with geometry nodes and just wasn't ready for the challenge yet. Now I wanted to add even more sort of spray and mist, so for this I created yet another Blender project and added in a bunch of Suzanne heads to simulate the smoke, because uh, why not use monkey heads? And they also added some really kind of cool sharp deformations to the smoke as you'll see here. Then using some wind force fields that I animated to kind of blow the smoke around to create that sort of misty fog. I then baked the smoke simulation at a pretty high level adding some noise detail to it as well and then brought these freshly baked smoke simulations into my wave scene and started adding them to the top crest of that wave. Sort of like the wind blowing some water spray off the top of this giant tsunami to add again more scale to the scene because that's all we're doing is trying to make this wave look as big and powerful and menacing as possible. So speaking about scale, who's to say how big this wave is until you can actually see it next to something else? So I downloaded a fishing boat model and added this tiny little fishing boat to the bottom of this giant tsunami wave just so you can see how menacing this wave is and how big it is in proportion to this tiny little fishing boat. Then for some finishing touches to the scene, I also rendered out a mist pass to add in compositing, along with some glows and distortion. But now with all of our pieces in the same scene, hopefully playing nice together, let's go ahead and take a look at what I came up with simulating a giant tsunami wave inside of Blender. There's all kinds of different things you can do once you have a giant wave like this. Another thing I kind of played around with in rendering is adding one of the city landscapes that I've created on this channel to the base of that wave, again, to kind of show off just how big and menacing this giant wave and scary big waves actually are. Another thing you can do with the scene is shoot some green screen footage of yourself and then place you at the base of this wave to make a really menacing sort of looking dramatic TikTok video. But it was a ton of fun, and as always, if you want to download this giant tsunami wave, you can do so over on my Patreon page. So follow the link in the video description if you want to download this finished file project. But I hope you guys enjoyed another one of my 3D giant experimental videos. Thanks again to MSI for sponsoring this video. Check out their incredible laptops with the link in the video description. And I'll see you guys all in my next video when I definitely don't burn down the studio simulating some giant fireball tornadoes. Peace!